everyone. This is the Crime Cafe, and this is your podcasting source of great crime, suspense, and thriller writing. I'm Debbie Mack, your host. And before I introduce my guest, just a quick reminder to please subscribe to the podcast either on YouTube or on the podcast channels like iTunes and Google Play. You can also find them at my website, debbiemack.com, along with links to the Crime Cafe nine book set and the Crime Cafe anthology, the short story anthology, which are really great deals. I'm offering them for a very good price. So with that said, I'd like to introduce an author that I met at, at all places, the Austin Film Festival, except he was there for the Texas Book Festival. And uh, his name is Patrick Kelly. So Pat, I'm really glad you could be here today to talk to us. Thanks for being here. Great, Debbie. Thanks for inviting me. It's such a pleasure. It's, it's so great to uh, chat with you again. And uh, I'm really looking forward to having a good, good conversation. Awesome. So um, your Joe Robbins financial thrillers. I was just telling uh, Pat that uh, the protagonist is very interesting and unique in that he is a freelance CFO. Um, yeah. Talk about that a little bit. Why did you choose a CFO as a protagonist? Great, great. So um, uh, when I first started writing, I am a, a CFO by training. You know, that's my background. I have a finance background. I don't, I don't have a formal uh, 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 a degree in, in, in English literature or anything else uh, of that fashion. And so, uh, but I've loved to write for a long, long time. And so when I, when I sat down and said, you know, I'd like to write a book and I, and I, and I had enough time to do it, um, uh, you know, I had to pick, you know, who, who are you going to write about? What are you going to write about? So I, I, I always loved, you know, suspense and crime stories. And so that was kind of natural. But of course, for me, uh, to try to do a police procedural would have required, um, just would be kind of uh, pretentious to try that anyway. And, 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 and just to, 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 to accomplish that would have required a ton of research. And there's so many good stories there anyway. So I, I thought, you know, to try to, they say write about what you know. So um, I created my, um, my protagonist, Joe Robbins. And to be a freelance CFO. And so the, the concept is with each book, he's hired by a new company. He goes into the company. Maybe they hired him to do something particular of, a, of an investigative nature, or maybe he just was hired to be an interim CFO and, and he discovers something. Something goes wrong. Usually somebody gets murdered. He learns more about it. Somebody tries to murder him. And then he has to, you know, he has to un, un cover the mystery to to get himself out of the trouble and so uh, people say right about what you know that part was was easy but then you also hear you know Alfred Hitchcock said drama is life with the dull bits taken out and uh, so if I had tried to write about my life um, uh, a CFO like me and taken out all the dull bits it would have been a very very short book you know <laughs> and so I know the feeling <laughs> uh, so so Joe has a more interesting background than me. He 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 grew up poor in South Dallas and to survive high school he learned how to box and then later um one of his crazy neighbors threatened his family and so he learned about guns and so he has these uh these tra you know these these back backstory aspects to him that make him a, a man of action. So he's he's got an analytical mind but he's also a man of action, and that's when you know I can, I can put him into these situations, and and he can and you can make an interesting story out of it. So that's, that's how I that's how I came up with this this protagonist who's a freelance CFO, and uh, you know gets into these 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 crazy situations. That's some very interesting backstory. Um, let's see. I was going to ask you about the um, the fact that you had mentioned. Uh, uh, financial thrillers as a genre tend to focus on world economy and taking down world economy or, or countries' economies, hacking, that sort of thing. Yeah. Yours seems to be a different sort of niche within that particular genre. Can you talk about that? Yes, yes. So um, 
uh, my books, I, I call my books financial thrillers and, and, and I've looked at the genre definition. It's not that crisp. So I feel good calling my books financial thrillers, but most financial thrillers you read, as you said, they have to do with this, this kind of mega, uh, picture, you know, the global economy and, and some evil person or, or persons or organization is scheming to disrupt the global economy by, you know, messing around with LIBOR or what, whatever. And, um, and then, you know, the, the hero uncovers this and then must has to, has to get in there. And of course there's, there's going to be a lots of, you know, action and, and guns and, and, and battles and stuff in order for the hero to overcome this, this conspiracy. And so um, I'm, you know, those are great stories. I, I'm more interested in kind of life at the micro level. And so my financial thrillers have to do with, you know, one individual being inside of one company and the issues are very, you know, there's always a, a, cr- a crime involved and a criminal involved. Um, but the issues are much more personal. You know, they're, they're, they're at the, they're at the individual kind of level. And uh, I find that uh, those kinds of stories, I think you can develop the characters more fully you can try to develop the emotional connection between the characters and uh, create a lot of conflict at a, a much more granular level, which I find fulfilling as a writer and also as a reader. I, I like to read stories like that, too. Yeah, same with me. I know how you feel. Um, in that sense, do you see Joe Robbins as being a bit like a private investigator? I was going to say it reminds me of the private eye genre, kind of like a yes. cross between thriller yes. and the private eye. Yes, yes. And, and, and I, um, I don't see him as a detective um, or a private eye per se, but there's this, this concept of the interested citizen, you know, so I think of him as the interested citizen. And um, uh, the interested citizen is, is just somebody who happens to be, you know, uh, going about their life, and they come across a situation, which is, uh, uh, out of out of sorts, and 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 there's some there's some definitely some right and wrong in that situation, and there's an opportunity for that interested citizen to take action. You know, uh, for whatever reason, it's not uh, easy for the police to come in and take care of the situation or, or whatever it is, and so this interested citizen uh, takes action, and and this happens in real life, you know, all the time. It doesn't necessarily happen to a guy like Joe Robbins again and again and again, you know, so that part stretches uh, credibility a little bit, but I think part of what I try to do with the character is I've given Joe this, this trait of his personality that he always runs toward the trouble. You know, Mm -hmm. that is, that is a part of who he is. And so he, he can't resist that, you know, and, and I got this concept from a friend of mine uh, who grew up, in Providence, Rhode Island, and, and, and his, he told me that uh, this is how he thought about the police. He thought about the police was that every time there was trouble somewhere, um, everybody would be running away from the trouble, you know, running away to safety. And the police were running toward the trouble, you know, and that's how he, that's how he perceived the police. And, that, and I thought that was very noble. And I like, I've always liked that the way of thinking about the police is that that's what they do for us. You know, they run toward, we all want to run away. They run towards, Mm -hmm. well, Joe has that, that aspect, the part of his personality is wired that way. And so when he sees something that's wrong and not right, if it's a fight in a bar or whatever, he runs toward the trouble, you know, whereas I, you know, I would look at it and I would say, well, is, uh, is that situation under control? Good. Then I'm leaving. And if not, then I'm calling the police, uh-huh. <laughs> but I don't know, I don't know, but I'm not running towards it, you know? And so, and so that's, but that's the aspect of his character that, and it, that creates a lot of tension in his personal life, obviously, because he's, he's, uh, you know, at least in the first book he's married and he has, he has two young daughters. And so, you know, he's got responsibilities of, 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 a, of a father and a, and a husband and, he needs to attend to those responsibilities. But then there's this other part of him that's always trying to run towards the trouble and getting him, you know, the sort of a reckless nature to him. And that creates a lot of tension in his, his personal life. I was going to say, he seems to be something of a thrill junkie. Would you say he's something like that? He is a bit of an action junkie. He, he, he is. He, he, um, he doesn't admit this to himself, 
Um, but there are situations where, as I said before, he re it really would make more sense for him to just go seek the safety of shelter away from whatever's happening. But instead, he runs towards it, and 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 in that sense, I think he is. He's he's a bit of an action junkie. He's not. He doesn't have a death wish or anything like that. You know, he obviously he he enjoys life, and he doesn't want to, uh, you know, he doesn't want to uh, do anything totally reckless, you know, or, or, or without regard for his own personal safety, but, but he does, uh, take risks. He takes risks. Yes. Well, uh, let's see. Um, your latest book, I have to say, congratulations on winning the Beverly Hills book award for Thank you. country siren. Thank uh, you. Tell us, tell us what happens in that book. What is it about? So in Hill country siren, um, Joe is, um, hired by a, uh, a rock star, a female rock star, to um, investigate a fraud. And coincidentally, this, uh, this rock star is someone that he idolized as a teenager. And so uh, she's, you know, call it eight years older than him. And uh, he's always loved her music. And so when he gets this call kind of out of the blue from a friend of his, you know, he has a friend of his is the, the, the lieutenant in the police force who's, who he's gotten to know through the books. And the lieutenant knows the security consultant for Sophie Tyler. Sophie Tyler is the, is the rock star. And the security consultant is, you know, talks to his friend, the lieutenant, and the lieutenant thinks about Joe and says, hey, Joe, you know, you should talk to this guy because uh, uh, he thinks there might be a fraud being perpetrated on the rock star. So, so he gets hired to help her out. And... Um, the, the concept is that, there, that she's made an investment that uh, her account and her security consultant uh, are concerned may be fraudulent. And so um, Joe is hired. He got, he's hired undercover because she's concerned. She doesn't want everybody around her to be, to be uh, uh, she doesn't want this to become a story in any case, you know, and she doesn't want the people around her sort of worrying about it. So he comes on board as her, as one of the security team uh, as Sophie is coming to Austin for the Austin Music Festival, which is a live three-day festival that takes place in, 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 in September. And so Joe goes undercover, and he solves this fraud in a couple of days. Uh, it's, it's fairly straightforward for him. But then the, the fraud perpetrator is murdered. And that's what draws him in more, um, more deeply into the, into the, the, uh, the story. Um, because this uh, fraud uh, perpetrator is murdered, and then he gets drawn in, and 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 then he's of course working very closely to Sophie Tyler because he's part of her security team, and and then you know you just take the, the story just runs from there and 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 gets more exciting. Eventually, he winds up on the trail of a, of a serial killer. Mm hmm. Yes. And um, despite being divorced, I don't think I'm giving anything away here. <laughs> uh, Joe obviously still loves his wife and his kids. I mean, yes. he's very devoted to them. I'm curious yes. about your thoughts about his story arc because he starts off married in the first book. Yes. And, you know, ends up where he is now. Talk about your plans for Joe in terms of where you see his character going throughout the series. Yeah. So, uh, for the future. Right. So he's, he has this, uh, he thinks of Rose, uh, his, his wife, uh, his ex-wife's uh, name is Rose. And he thinks of her as, as his soulmate, you know, that, that, that she is the one that, that he, you know, was kind of destined to be with. Um, but nevertheless, through his actions and her actions, um, the marriage just has fallen apart and they, that's resulted in divorce. And so, but they have these two daughters together and they both love them and they both care very much about them. And so that, that throws them together, you know, cause they're, they're jointly raising these, these kids. And so, um, you know, I get a lot of questions from people. And so she becomes a factor in each of the stories, you know, and, 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 uh, and so I get the question all the time from readers, you know, um, Joe and Rose, you know, uh, have to get back together. And so I have, I have the, uh, the spectrum of reaction from readers all the way from Joe and Rose forever. You know, I have, I've had readers send me that comment, Joe and Rose forever, all the way to the other end of 
okay, he needs to just get over her and move on with his life, you know? <laughs> so, mm -hmm. so I have a lot of different uh, outcomes that people are ready for. And uh, I myself have not, uh, you know, can never reveal, you know, what, what's going to happen with Joe and Rose uh, in part because it hasn't been written and you never know the ending, you know, you never know the book ending and you never really know the book ending until the book's published. Right. I mean, cause as an author, I changed the ending in Hill Country Siren like three or four times. And so, um, uh, so I don't really know. And, and if I, even if I did, I wouldn't want to, wouldn't want to share it, but I can mm -hmm. say that Rose is going to continue to be a part of his life, uh, in the stories to come as, as, as are his his two daughters obviously you know that's that's part of that's the the part of the story arc that that progresses from book to book and each of my books are are standalone books so they can be read in any order um but there is kind of a, an overarching kind of story arc with joe and his family and how things are going to work out over over the long term well i have to tell you i do love that part of your stories and great. their relationship is great it keeps them grounded and um gives you a sense of his humanity, you know, and his, his whole personal kind of um, aspect, the personal aspects of his life. Super. I, I also love the relationship he has with Rico, the detective, the police detective. Yeah. I thought the thing with his eye when he gets yeah. upset was clever. <laughs> I've never yeah. seen anything like that. Yeah. I thought it was very creative. Um, Brilliant, yeah. Do you yeah. see Rico as being part of the steadying influence? Oh like yeah, Rico will always be there. You know, Felix so, to his uh, Oscar or something for, like that. For the readers who aren't aware of the sort of the, the story arc, uh, in the first book, Joe uh, Hill Country Greed, Joe joins this company, and um, very early on, very early on in the story, a woman commits suicide. Um, and uh, in a very public way. And Joe happens to see her commit suicide. And so he meets Rico uh, Carrillo, L Lieutenant Rico Carrillo is the, is, is the head of, the, of, the, of Austin Police Homicide Department. And so uh, Joe meets him right there in the first book at the very beginning. And, um, and that's, that's the first time he meets him. And then later, of course, there are murders that happen in that story. And uh, Joe becomes a suspect in the eyes of Rico Correa, you know, and so their, their relationship initially is very tense, you know, mm -hmm. very tense because he's a murder suspect. And then by the end of the book, of course, it's, it's, it's not quite so tense. And then they, they, they become, they stay uh, acquainted and Joe becomes, and then, and then they're very, they're very involved together in the second book. Um, you know, uh, that, that book is about, drug cartels and 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 re, it's a revenge story and joe and rico are both rico plays a, a huge role in that and by the end of it you can tell that they're actually they've gone beyond this professional relationship they're actually friends now and uh and and so that's how that's how it kind of picks up in the third book it picks up rico's actually it starts off rico's concerned about joe and his love life you know he's like what's going on with your love love, love life and his Rico's wife's like, you need to get married again and have some more kids. And, <laughs> and Joe's sort of like, he's not really interested in that. But um, you can tell that the, they, they actually care about each other a lot. Yeah. And so Rico yeah. will continue to be a character in the, in the stories going forward. I was going to say, he's kind of a foil in the sense for Joe's, which is ironic considering you were talking about the police uh, embracing danger. Yes. Yes. <laughs> it's yeah. almost like Rico is like, Hold on, wait. Hold Rico, on. Rico considers him reckless. You know, he's like, and Rico is of two minds, really, because he's Joe's become something of an off the books consultant when it comes to financial issues. You know, so they are good friends now, and Rico knows that Joe has a financial mind, and so if there's like a case he's working on and there's a financial aspect to it, you know, sort of like the Sophie Tyler thing. You know, he's he's like he's got this buddy who's an expert on finance. So if something comes up and he doesn't have the resources within his own group. He, he's just kind of a guy he calls and says, well, what do you think about this? You know, and so that's an opportunity for, for Rico to think about him in, in sort of, uh, you know, as, as somebody who can help him out. But at the same time, he doesn't want him run, <laughs> running off, you know, in vigilante style and getting involved in things that he shouldn't get involved in. So exactly, there's and still kind of ongoing tension there in the relationship. Of course. There's always a tension between the um, investigator and the, the police. 
in any case. So, right. but having that police insiders is a great thing when you have um, crime involved. Um, I was going to say, I noticed that uh, your upcoming books are supposed to get more into Joe's family and an old love interest. Can you give a bit of a teaser about where you think you're thinking of going with that? Yeah, uh, in the next book, I want to take Joe uh, back to Dallas. That's where he grew up. And um, he worked uh, for an airline. Uh, that was his first job, kind of out of school. And then uh, he worked there, and that's how he sort of he developed his financial skills. And and um, uh, he and Rose were married, and they had kids. And so, but his father is uh, still alive in Dallas, and his sister is in Dallas, and they they've been referred to several times uh, in um, earlier books. And so I want to, you know, this is an opportunity I think in this story. So he'll be hired to go back into the airline business and do something, you know, some, whatever the assignment is. And that'll be sort of the seed of the mystery, but it'll pull him back to spend time with his, his dad and his sister. And that'll help me flesh out uh, for readers uh, more of his backstory. And then there'll be kind of an old, uh, uh, there, there's opportunity for an old love interest to, to come into the story as well, because now Joe's divorced. So he's, uh, you know, that's, that's, you know, I'm trying to, you know, create some dramatic opportunity there also. Well, cool. Yeah. And I'd like to take him on the road at some point in time. I, well, he's already been on the road a couple of times. Uh, you know, he's been to Beverly Hills in Mexico. He's been to Mexico a couple of different times. And uh, so I would, I do like the, no, the notion of taking him on the road and, you know, he, for whatever reason, he decides to take an extended vacation somewhere and then, uh, you know, he gets, you know, he gets drawn into a mystery in, 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 in that location. I'd love to do that too. Yeah. Um, I like, uh, another thing I love is the, um, the way you create Austin, you give people a sense of the place in your books. Because Austin is a really cool town, and yeah. that whole area is is just so cool. Yeah, Austin's Austin is uh, it's really hot now. I mean, I mean, I, I mean, very popular. It's very, it's a very, uh, it's it's a sought after uh, attraction. It wasn't really like that when I first moved. I moved here in '98, and so it wasn't really like that when I moved here. But over the last 18, 19 years this place has gotten on fire, you know? So now anytime I go somewhere and I say, where are you from? I say, I'm from Austin. They, they, they either have been here and they love it or they're, or they're planning to come, you know? And it's because uh, it's, it's great. And the beautiful thing about Austin is that geographic, you know, most of Texas is, is pretty predictable. I mean, it's, fl it's flat, it's kind of scrubby. It's not really physically that attractive unless you're a Texan and you've grown, grown up here and you love it, you know? But, but, Austin's beautiful to everybody because we got rolling hills. You know, we're right at the edge of the hill country. We got rolling hills. We have evergreens from the live oaks and the cedars. And so it's green all the time. And we have a lot of water, you know, because we've dammed up the Colorado River uh, to create these lakes. So you got all this great physical beauty. And then you've got, uh, of course, the weird aspects of Austin, you know, keep it <laughs> and you got the Congress Avenue. You know, so there's a lot of great settings, which every big city has. But I try to weave those in with each story. You know, I try to weave uh, some of the, those iconic local settings into the action scenes and into the story itself. Uh, because I, I think it makes it interesting. You know, setting is, setting is a big part of what... Oh, it's very cool. Yeah. Speaking as one who's been to Austin and knows those settings. <laughs> yeah, Even if you've never been there, it's fun to get to know the place. Yeah. Um, is there anything else you'd like to add before we wrap up? Um, yeah, uh, I think, um, a couple things, uh, just, uh, uh, one, sometimes I get, I get asked, uh, for advice from people who are thinking about writing a book. So I, I thought, I, I thought, you know, I'll just give, uh, I, I always give them the same two tips. So a couple things I would like to share with those, those of your listeners who are aspiring writers, I'll just give you two tips. Uh, the first one is, if you've not written a book, um, but you think you would like to, then I'll give you a simple test. Lock yourself in a room and write for four hours. And uh, the test is not, do you like what you wrote? Because what you wrote is not going to be 
not going to be good. The first draft of anything is not good. So the test is, did you have a good time? You know, so if, if, you, if you lock yourself in a room with no distractions and you write for four hours and at the end of the four hours you say, hey, I really enjoyed that, then that's good. You pass the test. If you did not enjoy that time, then you should find other hobbies. You know, don't try to write a book because it takes a lot of time. It's actually not that hard to write a book, but it's really hard to write a good book. And so it takes a lot of time. I, I put about a thousand hours when I, and I'm a finance guy, so I, I track this stuff meticulously. It takes me about a thousand hours to write a book because that's a lot of time. And, and, and to learn how to write took me many thousands of hours. And so uh, if you don't enjoy that, then, uh, then don't do it, you know, don't do it. The second tip is though, if you do enjoy it, if you really love it, then do it. You know, just, just, just keep writing because if you're passionate about it and you work hard enough and you work long enough, you will write a good book, you know? And so, uh, so those are my, uh, my, my, my quick tips for people who are interested in writing or, or think or dream. I've always dreamed about writing a book. And, uh, the only other thing, um, I wanted to, uh, to touch on, I know Debbie, I've listened to your show enough times that uh, you often ask who are the actors who should play the lead in, uh, in, in the stories. And so I, I, you know, I did a little homework on that. And uh, I, like, uh, I like John Krasinski, actually, as, uh, as Joe Robbins. Uh, he's got to be, Joe's tall, he's six feet, four inches, and uh, he gets into a lot of action. So you've got to uh, be tall and you know, sort of in your 30s, and John Krasinski kind of fits that. But you've also, you know, you want to be, you want a really likable guy, you know, and so, and, and present, everybody loves John Krasinski. So, and I've seen, you know, he's done some, he's done some, you know, pretty intense stuff as well. So I really like, I really think he could do that. I think he could, he could play the part. And, awesome. uh, and then the last thing I wanted to say is I've got, we've got the, the, the giveaway uh, for Hill Country Siren. So I'll keep that open through uh, the middle of next week. And uh, uh, anybody who wants to, to send me an email, just just mention, um, you know, the uh, the Crime Cafe giveaway and uh, I'll, I'll enter you into the contest. And that's P. Kelly, uh, P-K-E-L-L-Y stories, P. Kelly stories at Gmail. And uh, uh, so those those are the couple of things that I wanted to touch on while we we're together. OK, great. Well, thank you very much. Thank you for coming. Yeah, I really enjoyed the conversation. Always, <laughs> Thanks, always, me always too. great to talk to you. Same here. It was good to see you. And um, I will just finish up by saying that um, the Crime Cafe uh, podcast and YouTube video can be found on my website at debbymack.com, as well as buy links to the Crime Cafe anthology and nine book set. And as Patrick said, uh, he's doing a book giveaway, so don't forget about that. And uh, with that, I will just say thank you very much, Pat, and I'll see the rest of you in two weeks. Bye.